6, verse 7, it says, And the word of God increased, and the word of God increased, and the number of disciples, so you've got to read the word, not just, you know, just look at it, just read it, just read it, just read it, and when the word of God increased, the number of disciples When the word of God increased, and the number, and the, when the word of God increased, and the number of disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly, and the great company of the Jews were obedient to the faith. how God is preparing a group of people for revival. He's preparing a group of people for revival. And I'm not just talking about North Hollywood, but I'm talking about that in these last days that we're living in today, that God is preparing a remnant of his church. How many went through a pandemic? Raise your hand. Okay, all right, amen. Make sure, because... <laughs> right? All of us went through a pandemic, but how many, how many went through other trials along with the pandemic? How many had some family challenges or financial challenges or even possibly warfare that was taking place in your house or maybe even in the church, different challenges and trials? And I believe that God allowed those things to happen because he wants to bring a revival. But he wants to bring a revival... Not so much of just, uh, uh, you know, bringing in a guest speaker, so to speak, but a, a revival that God wants to bring is, is a revival where uh, there's going to be a lot of salvations taking place. So even what Pastor Ray was talking about earlier, I want to challenge you with that because he already mentioned it, so it gives me an avenue to share it, is that in my church we do this every year. Uh, once a year, we start in uh, maybe about this last month, right? So February time, all the way till Easter, we challenge our church to be soul winners. Every year. And we, we call it bring your five. Bring your five. And how many have five people that are not saved in your family or in your friends? Or they're not going to church? Raise your hand. You have at least five. That's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. How many got like 10 and 20, right? But even just here, you have over 100 people that is represented here that need Christ. Am I right? So what we do is we, we ask every year five people to come and bring these names. And I mean it with all my heart. It's not a gimmick to, build, to fill the church because I'm not going after church people. I'm going after the, your, your loved ones. Because how many know that's what the church is all about? So revival is when souls are being saved. And what happened is in our church, we had 280 names that we're praying for right now that need salvation or need to come to church. And I believe at least half are going to be coming that Sunday to Easter Sunday and Good Friday week. Amen. Just a few weeks ago, we had over 400 people come to church on a Sunday morning. Come on now. Give the Lord a hand of praise for that. We've seen revival in my church but I'm not talking about numbers. I'm talking about who's coming is going to get saved. So revival is sinners getting saved. Okay? That's number one. But, but also revival is the saved getting serious. Revival is the sinner getting saved. The saved getting serious. And thirdly, the suffering. Come on. Stop suffering. Because, see... In, the, in revival, there's three things that happen. There is souls that are being saved. There is also 
the saved getting on fire for God. Come on now. And those that are suffering, maybe it could be a healing. Maybe it could be a deliverance. Maybe it could be a, a baptism of the Holy Spirit that needs to be performed again in some uh, a believer's life. But they begin, in other words, in revival, there is an increase, as the Bible says, there is a multiplication of these things. And one thing also that happens, not just salvation and not just the fire of God falling on the believer, because how do you know you could be saved but not on fire? Look at your neighbor and say, are you on fire? Come on now. Or are you going through the fire? Come on now. Because there's a difference. Because, see, when the church is on fire, then what's going to happen is souls are going to be saved. And not just souls are going to be saved, but the third thing that's going to happen is that people are going to get healed. Lives are going to get delivered of some stuff. There's going to be some breakthroughs that is taking place. I'll share this, and, I, I, and it's fine. I'll share it. I, I, don't, I don't think it matters. I think she is okay with this. But there was a sister. I won't say what church because that, I, I was just last week praying for uh, someone in, in one of the churches I preached at. And she said that she couldn't have children. She was having a, a, a problem or a challenge having children. And I shared my testimony. Is, is I lost, We lost our first child, me and my wife. We lost our first one. We have our second one. Praise the Lord. Amen. And he looks like a Mexican. Come on, somebody. <laughs> amen. She's watch, she watches every, every service I go to. So, listen, I love you, but he looks like me. Amen. <laughs> I love my wife. She'll be coming for conference, so you'll get to meet her. Hopefully, some of you will, will be able to meet her. But my point is this, is that I share my testimony, and I was praying for the, the lady at the altars. Last night, she sent me a text. I don't know how she got a hold of me, but through Instagram, she did. And she went to the doctors, and guess what? She's pregnant. I don't know if I had anything to do with that or not. Come on, somebody. But all I know is that she's sharing this testimony with me. And I'm realizing that revival isn't just saved, people getting saved. And it isn't just people that, you know, are getting on fire. But also there's going to be an increase of miracles and an increase of deliverance that is going to take place in the church this morning. So maybe even tonight some of you might get healed. Maybe tonight some of you might get a deliverance that you've been, been asking God to deliver you of something. See, trials and pandemics and world hunger pains or pains of the, of the earth are nothing new to God. Did you know the last greatest revival was the Azusa Street Revival? If you know anything about church history, you find that the Azusa, not too far from here, the Azusa Street Revival started and Assemblies of God came out of Azusa Street Revival and Victory Outreach came out of Assemblies of God. So a lot of the revival of the church started in Azusa Street Revival. But did you know that around the same time was a pandemic? The Spanish flu. It was the same time around that pandemic. So pandemics and trials and the birth pains of the world are nothing new to God. But what God does is God shakes up the tree and God shakes up the church because he's looking for a remnant. And when he looks for that remnant, then that remnant is the one that brings the revival. I don't think you understand. Let me, let me break it down to you a little bit more. See, back in the Bible time, when Jesus was walking the earth, he was doing miracles. There was 20,000 people following him at any given moment. Sometimes there would be even more than 20,000 people following him. But how many know when he went to the cross, everybody left him? Oh, you don't hear me tonight. How many know that it's good to be a believer when everything's going good, but it's another thing to be a believer when there's trials? Oh, come on, I'm a pastor this morning. I know I'm a, I have to preach like an evangelist this morning, but I'm a pastor of a few hundred people. And how I know that there's Christians here, and I know that there's also disciples here. There's two different people here this morning, and the disciples are the ones that say, even though I go through trials, I'm not going to leave the Lord. And even though I go through trials, I'm not going to leave my church. Even though I go through trials, I'm not going to stop serving in the church because I am a disciple. I'm not a, just a Christian. I'm not just a believer. I'm not just somebody that looks at Jesus as my Savior, but I look at Jesus as my Master and my Lord. And whatever He tells me to do, He is my King. See, we don't know what a King is anymore because we don't know what it means to be under a King. 
But back in the Bible times, there were kings. And the reason that Jesus called himself a king was because it spoke to that generation. In that time, kings would say, do this, and everybody had to do it. So when Jesus says he's the king, how many know we like that because it means he's in charge, but it also should mean to us is that we are under his authority. In other words, whatever God allows and whatever God tells me to do, here I am, Lord. I am a DFW. I'm down for whatever you want me to do, however you want me to do it, when you want me to do it. It doesn't matter because I am somebody that's under a king. Come on, give the Lord a hand of praise if you're under a king tonight. So the disciples were there, and they were following Christ. They were following Jesus. And the Bible says that when Jesus went to the cross, they, they all left him. In fact, you know, they all begin to even deny that they were followers of Christ. See, I want to tell you that What's important when it comes to revival and when it comes to an outpouring, because see, we have the benefit of going to Acts chapter 6, verse 7. See, most churches and most people want revival. But in reality, when they were going to get to Acts chapter 6, they had to go through a journey. Someone say a journey. It wasn't going to happen overnight. God was allowing a purging and God always allows a purifying and God always allows a, you know a trial God always allow, uh, allows certain things in the life of a believer I got sad news for you tonight amen if somebody told you that serving God is a walk in the garden or a walk in the flowers come on now they lied to you tonight amen there's going to be trials and there's going to be hard times but how many know that that's where God is purging us and that's where God is pruning us why so that we could according to John chapter 15 so that we can bear more fruit so we can experience true revival that means your son's getting saved that means your daughter's getting saved that means sitting next to you at church is going to be your husband come on now right next to you at church is going to be your neighborhood that you're reaching why because that is revival because you've allowed God to prune your life you've allowed God to shape your life come on I've been serving God for 25 years, amen. I know I look young tonight, amen. I don't know how long I how young I look anymore, but I used to look young, amen, so I'm kind of still young, but I, I'm an old young man, amen, because I've seen a lot of things here in the church, amen, and I realize not everyone's going to make it to the end. Some may make it, but some are not going to make it on fire for God, but they're going to be barely make it. Why? Because they're not realizing that God wants to bring revival through your life, and right here in North Hollywood. You have to understand. See, but this is nothing new. This is nothing that, you know, God hasn't seen before in his, you know, thousands of years of mankind, of his creation. He's seen this before. And he, but here's the deal. We have, we have what you call free will. So, so he doesn't force us to, to follow him or not, but he says, okay, I'm going to allow them to go through these things so that I can see. See, the Bible says that Jesus came back, come on now, after he died, right? Come on, it's coming up Easter, right? Three days after, the Bible says he rose up, he came back, and guess what's the first thing that he started to do? He started looking for his disciples. See, even if you're far from God tonight, or even if you're not where you should be tonight, even if you're not on fire for God for tonight, I got news for you tonight. Jesus is going and looking for you, and he's saying, I want you back. I want you back on fire. I want you back where you used to be. I don't want you to feel discouraged. I want you to get on fire for Jesus Christ once again in your life so that you can be part of that remnant that brings revival. See, a remnant. Picture a building, you know, not this building, amen, but another building that, that experiences an earthquake. Come on. And that earthquake is rumbling and tumbling and moving that building around. And some, maybe even some of the building gets demolished and some of the, you know, the ceiling comes down and some of the walls come down. And after that minute or two of that earthquake, whatever is left over is a remnant. In other words, everybody experienced 
the earthquake, but not everybody was able to remain. See, not everybody was able to stand through the trial. You know, I, I've come here to tell you these last two years, I've gone through so much trials in my personal life, in my ministry life. I promise you that your pastor, I'll speak for myself, but I would, I would venture to say even your pastor, that it has been, there. listen, there was no book to read to be able to navigate this season, amen. We just had to trust God every step of the way. And how many know, amen, God was with us through this entire time, amen. We're coming out of it. It's, it's pretty much over here in the States. But the point is this, is that God shook the tree. He shook the tree. He shook all of us, pastors, leaders, everybody included. But I thank God that after the trial, God was looking for us. Hello. See, what God is looking for in this season is he's looking for the Peters. The ones that say, God, I'm going to go do something else. And God say, no, 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 wait a minute, Peter. You're my rock. You're not a fisher of fish. You're a fisher of men, Peter. Don't go back to what you used to do. Come on, somebody. But I, listen, and the Bible says that God went looking for Peter. And God went looking for that doubting Thomas. Come on. And God started looking for all the disciples one by one. He started going and grabbing them and grabbing them. He says, listen, I want to use you to bring revival. I want to use you to bring a, 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 a salvation to thousands. And I want to use you to do something big for my glory and my honor. But how many know that there was one that didn't make it through that? His name was Judas. Come on. See, and Judas didn't make it because Judas didn't do something very important when it comes to revival. Hear what I'm going to say tonight. This is very important. A lot of people don't, don't experience revival not because they're perfect. See, some people experience revival even though they made a lot of mistakes. But the difference between the 11 disciples and Judas was that all the 11 repented. See, you cannot have revival without repentance. Now, I don't know about you, but when I was growing up in church or when I would hear the word repentance, when I didn't know a lot, I would think that means I'm in sin or I'm a bad person. No, repentance is not because has nothing to do if you're a good or bad person. All of us fall short of the glory of God daily. All of us need God. All of us need grace. All of us need mercy. But it's those that acknowledge it and say, God, I'm here to repent, amen, of the things that I know I'm not doing. And God, forgive me. I want to be part of the revival that you're bringing, amen. I want to be part of the, the new revival and the new harvest you're bringing. Come on now. Isn't this Friday night, amen, third wave Friday night? Come on now. This is the remnant. This is the, this is the group of people that God's saying, I'm tapping on your shoulder. You could have stayed home tonight. You could have done something else with your Friday night. But you chose to come to the house of God. Why? Because you understand that you're not perfect, but you still want God to use your life. Amen. And you're willing to see, evaluate where you're at in your walk with God and go deeper. See, this is what I want you to understand. Listen. When God looks at a city, he doesn't look at the believers in the city. He looks at the non-believers in the city. He sees all the unbelievers. He sees all the lost sheep that he knows that are lost. And then, then secondly, after he's done looking at the lost, he starts looking for those that will answer his call upon that city. That's how God works. He looks at the lost, right? You know the scripture? When Jesus was looking at the lost, right, he looked at the lost first, and he said, they need sh shepherding. They need me. They need, and he said, look, guys, you need to pray to the Lord of the harvest, amen. He began to tell them, listen, why? Because the, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are you. Come on, some people, a few, you, whatever, which one you want to say. Here's what I'm trying to say is that. God wants to use you guys to bring revival. But you have to honestly ask yourself, am I where I need to be in my life right now? Am I truly, truly experiencing what I need to? Because when you experience revival, there should be repentance along the journey. See, that's what happened. Now you find that all of them are there. 
See, Jesus, the Bible says there was approximately 500 people that were following Christ during, I don't know what happened to the other 20,000 when they were giving away food. Come on, somebody. I don't know what happened to the other 20,000 when Jesus was doing miracles and healings. But for some reason, there was only 500 that were willing. Come on, sometimes it's not about numbers, but it's about who's in the room, amen. It's about the warriors. It's about the mighty men of valor. It's about the people that say, God, here I am. And here's the sad thing. It went from 500 to 120. You know, nowadays they would say Jesus had a small church. But Jesus understood that it wasn't about numbers, but it was about the power in the remnant. It, 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 it was, it was the, the flavor and the, and the spirit and the passion of that remnant that said, God, Lord, you've taken us this far. We've walked with you for three and a half years. We're right here. In the, right here, you have left and ascended to the right hand of the Father. And now you have promised us something. That would give us power. And the Bible says they were in the upper room praying and interceding. Come on. How many know if you want to experience revival, it's going to take prayer. And it's going to take interceding. And it's going to take fasting. And it's going to take separation. And the Bible says they begin to pray in the upper room. Here, but here's what I want you to know is that they prayed in the upper room not because they were so spiritual. But they were praying in the upper room because they were scared. You know that. You know why they were scared? Because literally they were being put to death. If they were followers of Christ, the Bible says that they would be put to death for being followers of Christ. And here is them praying in the upper room. And they begin to ask for this Holy Spirit that God, that Jesus had promised them. See, revival hadn't started yet. They, they, they were in the process they had to pay their dues, so to speak. They had to go through this journey of trials and of persecution and all these heartaches that they had went through during the church time in the book of Acts. I'm looking at Acts chapter 2 now. And the Bible says that as they begin to pray, all of a sudden, we know the scripture, right? The Holy Spirit began to fall on that. And all of a sudden, men that were scared became men that had courage and men that had power and men that walked. See, when I stepped into South Africa, if I would have stepped into my own strength, if I would have stepped in my own ability, if I would have stepped in my own experience, and I already had 13 years of experience, I would have not experienced what I experienced today. But when I walked into South Africa, I walked under the Holy Spirit's power and little by by little God started bringing revival to the country. I when I got to South Africa, there was only one church. Now we have eight churches in South Africa. When I went to South Africa and Pretoria, we had zero people. Now we have about three, four hundred people in my church right now. We, when I got to South Africa, we didn't own nothing. We had no money. In fact, when I took over the church, we were in debt. But how many know now we own property? And how many know now we're trusting God? In fact, I don't know if they have that that picture. This is the property. The, all this land right here is Victory Outreach Pretoria's land. Seven acres. This is for our men's and our women's home. This is actually an old photo, but it has, there's, there's a fence around this thing. There's three big houses. We can have up to 50 men and 20 women comfortably in that property right now. We have a vision. I'm trusting God that we're going to make this into a resort. You're going to want to be transferred to this home one day. Amen. You're going to go back in the home even if you were a graduate. Amen. God gave us this. You know how much we paid? Not one penny. Not one rand as it's called in South Africa. See, God wants you to understand that when you allow the Holy Spirit. See, this is important. If you really want to experience revival, you have to allow the Holy Spirit to baptize you in your life. That's what happened in the upper room. They were baptized in the Holy Spirit. See, we can have all the experience. We can have all the strategy. 
We can have all the, you know, the bells and whistles. But bottom line is, that's not going to change anybody. What's going to change is a group of people that are filled with the Holy Ghost and with power and walk in it and, and accomplish it and begin to let God use their life. How many want God to use their life to bring revival to North Hollywood? This is where I like to call the renewed. See, God let them on a journey. It was, it was first, you know, it was first a group of people following Christ. And those that repented, the 500, became part of the 500. They repented. Remember, all of them left the Lord. But 500 repented and became part of the 500. But then it got a little smaller. Then it got into the 120. The 120 were the renewed and the, those that were filled with the Holy Spirit. And they were, they, when they were filled with the Holy Spirit, all of a sudden things started happening in their lives. All of a sudden you start seeing healings and you start seeing breakthroughs in people's lives. All of a sudden you start seeing uh, a different perspective. All of a sudden you start seeing Peter preaching to thousands. Come on somebody. How many can see your church preaching to thousands? I said, how many could see your church preaching to thousands? Peter was preaching to thousands. He was 120 there. But here he is preaching to thousands. When the Holy Spirit took over in his life. When the Holy Ghost began to take over in his life. See, this is what I want you to understand. Is that it was the Holy Spirit that renewed them. It was the Holy Spirit that began to use their lives. And all of a sudden now... God was starting to elevate them and begin to use their lives. I want you to turn to Acts chapter 3. Quickly, real quick for me tonight. And we're going to believe God. See, Acts chapter 3 says this, verses 1. Peter and John. See, Peter and John went up together in the temple of the hour of prayer. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they daily put at the gate of the temple, which was called Beautiful. And he asked for them to enter into the temple. When seeing Peter and John go into the temple, he asked for finances or alms. And Peter fastens his eyes on him, and John said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto expecting. Someone say expecting. Expecting to receive something. Then Peter said, Silver and gold I have none, but what I have I give to thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. He took him by the right hand. He lifted him up. Immediately his feet and his ankles, bones received strength. And he leaped and stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they all knew this was the man which sat at the arms of the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement on which had happened unto him. Why do, I, why do I use this story? See, Peter and John, listen to me tonight. Peter and John were Jewish men. They went to church like we go to church in Victory Outreach. Come on now. We're supposed to. Come on. How many know when the doors are open, we're supposed to come to church, right? I, don't, I was in church every day growing up in my walk with God. And no matter, it was drama practice, it was Easter this, it was, you know, it was all kinds of stuff. That, and I loved it. I, I enjoyed it. But my point is that Peter and John were going to church every day. And this man was put there every day. Listen to me tonight. He was put there every day. Peter and John would go to church every day. In fact, three times a day. So they passed by this man many times. But see, something happened to them when the Holy Spirit baptized them. Something shifted in their perspective now that they didn't want to see people be hurting and suffering anymore, but they wanted to now change their city. They wanted to now change their surroundings. See, I don't know if you know it, but you got people around you that need your revival. People in your communities, you do not even know who they are. People that are at their grocery store, come on now. Listen, Peter and John walked by every day and probably didn't even notice this guy. But all of a sudden now, they got power living inside of them. They got the Holy Spirit living inside of them. And there's a difference between a church 
that does church, and there's a difference between a Christian that is just a Christian and a church and a Christian that is filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. There is a difference inside of that person. You can see it. You can see their power. You can see that they have the right perspective. Come on, somebody. How many know that God wants us to see things the way he sees them? He wants us to burden for the things that burden his heart. I like to say it like this, and I've heard it said like this before. God, break my heart for the things that break your heart. And now Peter and John pass by this man, and they say, hey, I'm tired of you sitting here like this. I see you every day, and I see that you're sitting at this gate. But today, is you're looking at a new man. I want you to look on us now. We're not the same men that we were before. We have been filled with the Holy Spirit. And now, listen, today's your breakthrough and today's your revival. And today, God is going to use me to heal your body. And he said in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, stand up and walk. Why? Because they were now in the natural. They were operating in the supernatural. See, when there's revival inside of you, you bring revival all around you. When there's fire and when there's a burden inside of you, it begins to get to all those around you how many on fire for Jesus tonight I said how many on fire for Jesus tonight see this man listen he didn't know that these men had changed he didn't know that this man that these men were now different see this is what God wants you to understand tonight see we're in a year of acceleration this is third wave Friday right I believe the reason Pastor Ray has put third wave as the title or the theme for this Friday night is because there is a revival taking place in the third wave. And it's not just a third wave of of, of age, but a third wave of revival that is coming to South Africa or coming to America, coming to South Africa, coming to different parts of the world. And how many know that North Hollywood is going to be part of that revival? I said, how many know that North Hollywood is going to be part of the revival that God is going to bring to Victory Outreach? Amen. We're not going to be like this man that was on the outside looking in, but we're going to be on the inside in the revival that God is bringing. How many believe that? Come on, clap your hands. Come on, shout like you really mean him. Shout by faith. Shout by faith that you know that your church. That means you got to get on fire. If you want to be part of this remnant that brings revival, I pray that you would realize, just like this this man that was sitting at the gate, many of us are on the outside looking in of revival. Come on. See, so many Christians were comfortable with just coming to church, but not being the church. Come on. Not being his hands and his feet and being part of participating in the revival that God wants to bring. See, this man didn't understand that. But there was going to be a power that released in his body. And that power, listen, that power didn't just heal his his body, but it healed his mind. See, because this man was crippled, not just physically, but crippled in his mentality. Because every day, someone he didn't even get there himself. Someone had to put him there. He was relying on others. Come on now. He was relying. He didn't have his own life. He didn't have his own things. And here he was crippled and and abused and and probably used to just, this is how I'm going to live my life. Come on. This is how I'm going to die. Come on. This is how I'm just going to be the rest of my life. But how many know that God wanted to bring revival to his life? He said there is a bigger picture for your life. There is a bigger purpose for your life you're not called to be crippled anymore and the bible says that when he got up he began to leap in joy and guess what everybody around him began to experience revival why because how many know that when we get on fire other people get on fire that are around us Oh, you don't hear me tonight. I said, when you get on fire for God, all of it looks like that old Christians used to say. They say, light me on fire and watch me burn. Why? So that others can see the fire of the Holy Spirit living inside of a Christian. I don't want to be a dead Christian. I don't care how long I've been saved. I don't care how many miracles I've seen. I don't care how many countries I've been to. I don't care how many times I've preached. I don't know. I can't even count how many times I've preached in my life.
my life. But I never want to lose my fire. Why? Because God has not called me to be a dead Christian. But God has called me to be a fire and a light to this world. Fire. Power. See, numeric growth in Acts chapter 6 verse 7 didn't happen just because it happened because people got on fire. See, numbers, numbers don't mean everything. But I promise you that there will be numbers when the church is on fire. They could come to the keys. Fire will flow through a Christian. And he can't help. Now, <coughs> listen. I'm more of an evangelist than I am a pastor. I'm a pastor. I have a church. All these things I do, I do as a pastor. But to be honest with you, I love winning souls more than anything else. I love seeing somebody get saved. I love seeing someone come into the home. I, 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 love, I love, you know, seeing that new Christian come to church and I nurture them and graze them up. Because how many know evangelism is not complete until discipleship takes place? If you just win them to the Lord, you've half evangelized. You have to grab them and, and, and love on them and shepherd them and raise them up. And maybe they will be a leader or maybe they'll be a pillar. It doesn't matter. You place them in the, in the fold. You place them in the church. And that is revival. And guess what? If everybody were to do that, could you imagine the souls that would be saved? Can you imagine? The revival that would take place in the church. That's my prayer. I think even Pastor Joe mentions it. But if I'm honest, I used to say it even before. I heard him say it a lot. Is that we need to be a ministering congregation. That's one of the keys he talks about a lot. But to be honest, I, I, I always thought that way. Because I never felt like God brought me to church just to be a church member, but God called me to be a minister even before I was a pastor, even before I was a leader. I said, I got to tell people. I got to let people know what Jesus Christ has done for me. All I know is that I was one way, and all of a sudden, the next day, I was a different man. I was a different person. God touched my life. All I sat in the back of a church, and I started crying and weeping like a baby. I cried for about two hours. And the church service was over. Everybody left, and I was still crying like a baby for some reason and I could not deny the next day I had to tell somebody what God had done in my life and to this day 25 years later I'm still trying to tell people what Jesus Christ has done in my life come on stand to your feet you know I did a drama in South Africa about my testimony it's called once upon a testimony it's not new. I didn't make it up, but it worked. I had no idea that my testimony would be a, the greatest impact in my church ever had. We had 1,400 people that came out to that drama. I don't even know even in any other church that's had that big of a turnout. And guess what? I had no money for it. I had no budget for it. I did it all by faith. I probably didn't have the best quality, but I promise you, there was over 300 people that gave their lives to God that, that night. And I wasn't even supposed to do my testimony. I picked, because I, always, I don't always want to promote myself. So I, so I picked one of the guys from the home. And I says, man, I want to do your testimony so it can encourage the families, encourage people. You're from here. Maybe you could connect better. I had no idea that my testimony would connect the way it did. And I don't have time to share that. But that's, that's another, another message. My point is, he backed out <laughs> about a week before the drama. We are practicing for it and all that. Long story short, I says, well, this guy backed out. I know my life story. I don't have a script or nothing. I just can tell him what to do. 1,400 people came out. Guess, 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 guess how deeper this becomes. You know who got saved of that drama? My wife. My wife. She gave her life to the Lord of that drama. I kind of tease her a little bit. I said, I led you to the Lord, you know. I didn't 
didn't know who she was, anything. I was just trying to, I was just on fire. And I, I hope I'm still on fire. I hope I never lose my fire because I want to bring revival. I want to bring revival everywhere I go. See, but maybe you're in a place of repentance. You need to repent. Well, thank God that there's grace and mercy here tonight. Maybe you've repented, but you're not on fire for God. You need the Holy Spirit to renew you tonight. Renew you to almost like, like, like sisters, you know, come on now. We do a makeover. Come on. <laughs> Maybe the Holy Spirit has to do a makeover on you tonight. Come on, men of God. Maybe you got to work out, you know, phys- you know. God has to do a, put you on a, put you on a training, you know, uh, uh, system. Come on, somebody. Get you back in shape. Get you back on fire. Maybe for some of you, you, you you've, you've, you've done that. You've, you, you, you've, you've, you've gone through the trial. You didn't give up. You're still here. You're the remnant. You're seeing your church grow again. You're seeing getting ready for Easter. You say, ah, but God, use me to bring revival. Use me. But I'm also going to pray for healings tonight because we kind of have revival. Like I said, revival is a sinner getting saved, the saved getting serious, and the suffering stop suffering. Maybe you need a healing tonight. You're suffering. You're suffering in your body. I've been used by God. I give God the glory of seeing people healed before. In, in other countries and other places around the world. I've seen it with Mo and I. I've experienced it. So if God is, that's God's will for you tonight, it'll happen. He's going to heal your body. But maybe you need other things tonight. As they sing this song, and you say, I want to be part that brings revival to my church. I want to bring revival to North Hollywood. I don't want to be just a regular Christian. But maybe you need fire tonight. And as they get ready to sing this song, I want everyone to come and spend some time with the Lord tonight. Step out of your seats. Come on, there's a third wave revival. You're part of the third wave revival. Step out of your seats. Come on, come to these altars. Come. Come to these altars. Come spend some time with the Lord. Come on, come to these altars. Spend some time with the Lord. Lift up your hands. Come on, the name of Jesus.